Greetings and welcome back. Today we have yet another very cool integral that Wolfram Alpha could not return a closed form for. And that's actually the case with quite a few of my integrals, so that's something I'm quite happy with. We have the integral from 0 to infinity of cosine log x divided by 1 plus x plus x squared x squared dx. So how do we begin the solution development? Well, we have cosine log x, so let's work with that. Recall from Euler's beautiful formula that e to the i x equals cosine x plus i times sine x. And we know that x to the i is actually e to the i times log x. So that means we would get cosine log x plus i times sine log x. And this means the target integral i is simply the real part of the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the i divided by 1 plus x plus x squared dx. And that does look somewhat better, but we still need something more to work with. Well, we could get a nice structure if I expand upstairs and downstairs by 1 minus x. So we have the integrand. And along with it, we have 1 minus x divided by 1 minus x dx. So that gives us the real part of the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the i minus x to the 1 plus i divided by, in the denominator, we now have 1 minus x cubed dx. So using the linearity of the integration operator, we can write this as the real part of the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the i divided by 1 minus x cubed dx minus the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the 1 plus i divided by 1 minus x cubed dx. And now to make use of a really cool result I derived a while back, that is the principal value of the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s minus 1 divided by 1 minus x to the k dx equals pi by k times the cotangent of pi s by k. And here, of course, our value of k is 3. So this implies that the target integral i equals the real part. Let me see. We can factor out pi by 3. So there we go. We need pi by 3 times the real part of cotangent. We have pi by 3 times, for i, we have s equal to i plus 1, so that's pi by 3 plus i pi by 3, terribly sorry about that, minus the cotangent of, now what, we have pi by 3 times i plus 2, which is again pretty simple, that's just 2 pi by 3 plus i pi by 3. Okay, cool, now we just have to figure out what's the real part of this expression. We know that cotangent equals cosine divided by sine. So we'll just expand the sines and cosines here, starting off with cosine pi by 3 plus i times pi by 3. This yields cosine pi by 3 times cosine i pi by 3. And then we have the sine functions, minus sine sine pi by 3 times the sine of i pi by 3. Now for some cool results from complex analysis, we do know that cosine of i times z is the hyperbolic cosine or cosh of z, and we have sine of i times z equal to i times the hyperbolic sine or the cinch of z. So that means, now cosine pi by 3 is, where's my calculator? Okay, instead of, instead of finding my calculator, cosine pi by 3 is supposed to be 1 half, I guess. So that means we have cosh pi by 3, if we factor out 1 half, minus we have i times cinch and, wait, we have a factor of root 3 as well. So i times root 3 cinch pi by 3. I hope I do not mess up any of these results. As I've gotten better at doing advanced calculus and solving all these integrals, I've gotten worse at basic math to the point I do not remember these very common trig ratios, these values of these trig ratios, that is. 
Anyway, hoping for the best. And then we have sine of pi by 3 plus i times pi by 3, terribly sorry about that, equal to sine times cosine. So we got sine pi by 3 times cosine of i pi by 3 plus the cosine of pi by 3 times the sine of i pi by 3. And that gives us, well, we have a root 3 there. Okay, cool. Again, we'll factor out 1 half. We got root 3 times cosh of pi by 3. Then we have plus i times the cinch of pi by 3. Okay, cool. And now what about the other values that we needed? One thing we needed was cosine 2 pi by 3 plus i pi by 3. And this would, of course, be cosine 2 pi by 3. Now, this should be negative 1 half because that angle falls in the second quadrant. So we'll just factor out 1 half, leave a negative sign here with the cosh of pi by 3. And then we have a positive sign value. So that's plus i times, no wait, minus i times root 3. And we could just factor out negative 1 half instead. I mean, why not? So we have i times root 3 cinch pi by 3. And now for the sine term, we have sine 2 pi by 3 plus i times pi by 3 equal to, again, we'll factor out 1 half immediately. So we got sine of that thing times the cosh. The sine is, yeah, that's root 3 times cosh pi by 3 plus, and we have... Mm, negative sine, okay, negative i times the cinch of pi by 3. Okay, cool. So I just referenced my notes, and it turns out I did not fuck up basic trigonometry, which of course makes me quite happy. And what do we need? We have our cosines, we have our sines, and we need the cotangent of pi by 3 plus i times pi by 3. And this thing would be this cosine divided by that sine. So the one halves cancel out. And we have cosh pi by 3 minus i times root cinch pi by 3 divided by root 3 times the cosh of pi by 3 plus i times the cinch of pi by 3. And of course, to separate this into real and imaginary parts, we will expand using the conjugate of the denominator. So we're going to expand using root 3 cosh pi by 3 minus i times cinch pi by 3 divided by root 3 cosh pi by 3 minus i cinch pi by 3. So that gives us, in the denominator, we have a complex number times its complex conjugate, which of course, gives us the square of the absolute value. So we have 3 cosh square, terribly sorry about that, pi by 3, plus cinch square pi by 3. And upstairs, we have root 3 times cosh pi by 3 squared. And then we have minus i times root 3 cinch pi by 3 times cosh pi by 3. And I'm going to need a bit more writing space. And then we have, well, minus exactly the same term. So I'm going to write this here as twice this quantity. And then we have two negatives canceling out. That's a positive, but you have i squared, which is negative 1. So we have minus root 3 times cinch square pi by 3. Okay, cool. Now, take note of something. We have root 3 times cosh square pi by 3 minus cinch square pi by 3. And cosh square minus cinch square is supposed to be equal to 1. So we just have root 3. Root 3 minus... We have 2 cinch times cosh, which is the double angle formula in the hyperbolic realm anyway. So we have i times root 3, and that's cinch of 2 pi by 3. Okay, cool. That is, again, quite nice. And in the 
denominator, we have 2 cosh square pi by 3 plus cinch square pi by 3. You know how math professors have this really cool superpower where they just write similarly and then a result pops up out of nowhere like, boom, I just wrote similarly and now we have the cotangent of 2 pi by 3 plus i times pi by 3. I'm not a professor yet, but I hope to be one very, very soon. So it looks like I'm getting the hang of this. And in other news, you guys can get early access to my content via Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Yes, I'm quite serious about that. Regardless of the level of support, you all will receive write-up for the problems I solve before I make the videos for YouTube. Anyway, coming back to the problem we're trying to solve, we have the two cotangents, we have to subtract them and then take the real part. And notice that we actually get a bonus integral via the imaginary parts. So we have the integral from 0 to infinity of cosine log x divided by 1 plus x plus x squared dx. And we had a pi by 3 and this thing minus negative root the same thing. So that's 2 times root 3. So I'll write this as 2 pi root 3 divided by 3 times this thing, 1 by 3 cosh square pi by 3 plus cinch square pi by 3, which is a really cool result. And we also have that bonus integral that is for the imaginary parts, that is integral 0 to infinity sine log x divided by 1 plus x plus x squared dx equals, well, 0. There you go. And Wolfram Alpha did get the closed form right for this integral, which I guess is a point to Wolfram Alpha. But this thing is extremely cool. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from the video. Be sure to like and subscribe, comment, share the video, help promote the channel and all that kind of jazz. Drop me a follow on Instagram for write-ups that I post after my YouTube videos. And of course, you can support the channel on Patreon. Thank you. See you next time.